Yes. Here. This is Carlos? Yes. This is Gardy. Here. This is Here. And if everyone who sees join me in the Play of Allegiance. Play of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I have a motion for the approval of minutes? Any discussion? Ms. Bruto, Mr. Yes. Mr. Next, we're going to go through committee updates. Uh, as I read off your committee, you can give an update if there's anything new that's happened since last night, or if you have upcoming meetings. Uh, Ms. O'Toole will be on the committee. I have no report. Uh, policy committee, again, Ms. O'Toole. Uh, uh, we're working on a date for a, a meeting, but we don't have one yet. Gotcha. Business advisory, Ms. Garvey. No report. Capital planning, Ms. Garvey. Uh, Dr. Hunt. We are going to schedule a meeting, I think, for our first quarter of the company planning. Yeah, I sent an email out just confirming people's continued interest, and we haven't, I haven't reached back out to so Okay, that'd be great. We're trying to, we're aiming for quarterly meetings to do four a year, so if we could do it maybe before spring break, but if not right after, that'd be great. Best, yeah. Thank you for coordinating. Would that be the school's third quarter then? <laughs> I don't want to get too confused. Um, and the Finance and Budget Committee also has no report. We haven't had a meeting since the last report. And record attention, I have no report for that. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn over the meeting to Dr. Hunt. Good evening, thank you. Uh, just a couple of brief reports uh, this evening, and they relate to recommendations for the development agenda uh, under my recommendation. So, uh, we've got Ryan Schmidt, who has become a man who needs no introduction uh, from TVA here uh, this evening. Uh, Ryan is going to give us kind of an overview of uh, traffic pattern impact with the reinstallation of courts, uh, tennis courts. Uh, if you one point forward and ask that uh, they take a look at that at TVA and bring back any thoughts or recommendations. So we wanted to circle back around as later you'll be asked to approve um, a recommendation for the reinstallation of courts. So Ryan, can you maybe just walk through the... Um, Traffic pattern implications and you know, modifications for next year, and then talk just briefly about the uh, kind of bid coverage and yes. what your thoughts are. Yeah, um, for anybody that doesn't know, I'm Ryan Schmidt, with TDA Architecture. Um, yeah, we received the bids. I'll start with that. The, bid, the bidding was very competitive. Uh, we ended up with five bids for the tennis courts, which was very good coverage. Um, we had all the big players that are in the industry in the area bidding it, and the price uh, grouping was very good. Uh, everybody was in it within uh, probably about a I think thirty forty thousand dollar window, which on four hundred thousand dollars is pretty good, uh, pretty good grouping. The low parent low bidder is mainly um, uh, site contracting, which is local to the area, and uh, so their advantage is that they're local, and that's why the cost is a little a little lower. They have less travel, less less things of that nature. Their yard is right down the street. Uh, they did go through the process of vetting out their bid on um, TDA and. Um, Lewis Land Professionals both called on them separately. Uh, Lewis Land being the civil engineering group that worked with us on this project. Uh, and we went through and we vetted out the, the documents and their inclusions and all those sorts of things, and it was very comprehensive. They had everything covered, all the right answers. Um, they're ready to roll on this project, and they, they're really excited about the opportunity. So uh, we have a good feeling for that. Uh, they're a big firm that does lots of this type of work, and they hired uh, as their uh, tennis consultant, the company that that's what they do. Uh, it's essentially a, uh, uh, their uh, uh, the name's escaping me, but they're from uh, western part of the state, and that's all they do is exclusively tennis courts. So uh, feel really comfortable with it. Uh, as far as the impact to the rest of the site, uh, putting that out there, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Question: sure. Were there any add-alls on the, the project? Okay. No. So can you talk a little bit about the drainage? Yes. Yes, uh, so everything we did in this process was to improve situations. So um, the drainage that could have been done would be nothing, is 
essentially we're taking what is already there and doing nothing. But instead of doing that, we did uh, go through the process of creating an underground uh, uh, detention system. Essentially, it's a, a series of chambers uh, that collect down at one end of the tennis courts. And so essentially what you'd see, uh, like that base of the south that's over by the, the baseball field down there, where you'd see an above ground basin like that, this has that, but it's buried below the ground in chambers. So down underneath one section of it, there will be a series of chambers to collect water. And that's, again, to improve the capacity of that area of the site. Um, again, per EPA requirements, we wouldn't have needed to necessarily, but knowing limitations with the site, knowing some of the, off, uh, the water runoff that you have across uh, the area, and just the future of improvements on the site, this was a, a very a sound time to do it. You have very uh, little space outside of that area to be adding a bunch of detention and being able to put it under the courts as we're already excavating, we're already putting in uh, drainage associated with the courts. This was this was a very home run sort of situation where you get the best both worlds. Will they extend the life of the courts at all? Um, no, because from the standpoint of we would have had proper drainage one way or the other. What this does is it improves everything around it, essentially. So the courts themselves would have been good either way. This improves your peripheral areas around the courts, which I guess in theory would help with the courts themselves. But it's the adjacent parking lot or water pools and some areas and drives and things. You're still going to have some puddles and some of the existing lots, but all that water that gets into the ground and has nowhere to go, it has somewhere to go with this system. Will be collected not and provide some storage for it. So, in general, that portion of the site should see improvement for it. And consequently, your neighbors that are right off that, that side of the site should see, they may never notice it, but there is uh, a calculatable difference in the amount of water that would be able to come down that hill. So, it's it's improving that situation across the board. So, so it gets captured and then slowly, more slowly seeps back into Yeah, that. so it's essentially taking an above ground basin putting it in these chambers so nobody will ever see it. So yeah. there's going to be this perception nothing's done, but as they're doing that work, as they're doing that excavation, those chambers are put in and it's covered up. And so it's less of an ice or less of something to maintain down the road, but you still have all that capacity uh, in, that, in that system. So it's a, it's a really good system. Just a question, is it like buried chambers? I mean, mm -hmm. is that it collecting them all the time? Or? No, yeah. and there's such that you can clean them out if you ever needed to, but there shouldn't be much sediment. They essentially get these either essentially half pipe type system and they get a wrap over the top of it to prevent a lot of that sediment from getting in there. So it's really from that kind of gravel percolation that you see water coming in. That's really no different than any sort of basin or system like that. So it's uh, this is very common. Any any of the urban sites you'd see this sort of system used very consistently. So it's a good system. questions with that? Find the timeline. Uh, timeline, they're ready to uh, start with the submittal process. Uh, we do have drawings into the village and to the village engineer just to see if they have any additional comments. Um, just the first cursory reviews from the village engineer, as he said, he did everything. He said things were looking like everything was done in the correct manner, so I don't foresee any issues with that. So in theory, they'd be ready to roll uh, our office uh, does generate contracts, so pending some form of approval in the night, we'd be able to get the contracts uh, lined up and ready for you know, signing and stuff of that nature. Uh, the thing I would want to do right off the bat is start getting some of the submittal process started so that uh, we can get materials lined up, and then if there's any potential to start early, that's always a good opportunity to if that's something that people are open to. So, uh, with weather the way it is, we couldn't probably turn around and start tomorrow and hope for the most success. Uh, as things start to dry out more and that's when we're going to see our, our biggest benefits. So there is going to be that window. We're just going to have to talk through that with the contractor and see when they think that window is. When the weather breaks to the point where you have consistent work. Because going out there and getting the site all muddy and not being able to work it doesn't help anybody either. So there is that threshold. I think it's usually about a month from now when that road starts to be optimal. But uh, in going through the schedule, assuming that we start at the end of the year, they saw no reason they couldn't meet the deadline of August 3rd and be done. So if we get them at a time, it should only help the situation. So. And just to explain one more time, real quickly, uh, when they start doing that process, you're going to see a ton of work right away. They're going to be doing all the excavation, they're going to be installing all the piping, they're going to gravel it, put the asphalt down, it's going to sit there. 
So just I want everybody to know that that's that's going to happen because uh, the house basically has to off gas, and so you'll get much gas out of that. I'm sure. And there's no variances required. Right? No, no. We're going back to work, so there, there's really no change in use, no change in anything, um, and we're not creating additional hikes. Uh, all we're doing is making improvements. So uh, I don't perceive any issues. We've had ongoing conversations with the village, and I haven't heard any issues that they have. Any other questions? Um, as far as uh, the resulting work and what it does for parking, it does take off about 60 spaces, 60, 64 spaces. Um, we did go through the numbers that are uh, provided and the number of passes that are currently provided uh, to seniors and juniors. And it appears that in that red lot space that's over by the middle school, if we take essentially the first kind of collection of parking that's up against uh, the curb and then that center portion we would be able to accommodate uh, those students. I think that's the optimal location. It keeps the students on that same path that everybody is utilizing presently. Uh, it groups them on the inside of the bus lanes so that they're not having cross bus traffic when they're walking. They're essentially crossing over at two crosswalks which are presently there. Uh, so from, for all those reasons, I think it's optimal to locate them there. And then their dismissal at the end of the day would coincide and they follow the same pathways that all the other students would as well. So uh, while it does push them further down the line and it does create a little bit of disruption to some of that parking over in that location, um, it, it does, I think, meet the intention of what we're trying to do with the student parking all along and it doesn't really take away from that. Uh, the only expense that you would have is striping for that one crosswalk, which is located up by the Performing um, Arts Center, and that's just really reinforced that. It's a park center now. Um, it's a mix of teachers and visitors, and we, in the plan that we have, though, we're maintaining the ADA spaces that are right adjacent to uh, the crosswalk itself. It's down across from the middle school, and we're maintaining seven visitor parking spaces. So primarily, the people that would be affected would be the staff people. Area. They would be pushed to the outside of that parking lot, and then they would, uh, some would fill in in the green lot, which is located to the south of the site. That's already a staff lot down in the green lot, and that, that back portion, since the teachers get there at a slightly different time than the students, uh, it would make more sense for the teachers to be parked along the back side of the parking lot. So I'm not, I'm not usually here during the day, so I assume there are open spaces right now? Or? There are. I mean, we, we think we can make this work. I mean, it may result in a student uh, parking. It just really depends on how many students want to drive and get in here and how much we want to allow for overflow for events during the day. I know I stopped in today and I was way in the back of that staff lot. <laughs> Any thoughts about? Um, the students who are walking via the rack and then crossing right, right over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a striped crosswalk there. What I loved about the old plan, which of course they had to let go of, was that there were no students crossing where there were pedestrians crossing. Is there anything we can do to improve that? Which I think is a pretty, pretty you healthy about traffic this, yeah, um, crossing. About all you can do with any of them is switch present day felon in several locations. Do the elevated ones that causes people to slow down. Mm -hmm. The marker in the middle, like you have there, is a, is a good um, device as well. Um, you can add lights and blinkers and stuff, but after one time, people kind of do close things right. up. So they do not forget about these people. Once. <laughs> you know, once and, and that's, that's what you do. But I mean, something like that, I would not. As you're doing other work on the site, I would recommend doing that because that does involve asphalt, it does involve concrete. It's not as easy as necessarily right. looks. So it's, it's a pretty intensive thing to try to do. Right. Um, not necessarily super expensive, but you are bringing on multiple trains to do that sort of thing. And we have asphalt work scheduled for this mm -hmm. summer, right? To do the middle school lot and to, are we creating this actual turnaround? Uh, that, well, I guess we have it painted. Yeah, that's there. I, I don't know about the asphalt okay. work in that lot. Okay. We are not planning work for the summer for the middle school lot. Okay. No paving work will be done this summer. But it, well, 
it is scheduled or ready to be. It is scheduled. Yeah, that ready. would be the next on the pavement schedule okay. on this campus would be the middle school lot. In fact, in this red area where 64 spaces are, there was some work done on the northern part of that lot. Um, I would say, you know, probably the bottom three-fourths of that lot or the south three-fourths of that lot are are at the near the end of their useful life. It did get seal coated last year and crack fill. I feel like it's got a, two years in it. We're going to do, we'll add, that would be the next piece on this campus, um, and it'll be part of our five-year paving plan when we update it. Um, you know, next time we're working on updating our five-year paving plan, and that's at a top priority um, is that on this campus is that it's not. Chris, would you, would you look at the possibility of doing a raised crossing? I know it's a little tricky there because you've got, you'd have to come from the grass area. But maybe we just have a path for the students to get them onto that grass area and come over a raised when, when the middle school work is done, just something to evaluate and maybe get a cost on. And I could see it benefiting people who park near the tennis courts as well and maybe be able to be access the path via that raised crossing. The one that's um, north of the Performing Arts Academy, so just our uh, Right, right. The other recommendation we'll see later is um, regarding the website we've been updating the report report. Uh, if there's any questions uh, regarding that recommendation, you know, they're essentially all the other things. I have a question there. Uh, the resolution isn't attached to the report. Is the limit on that. I know I was asked that question. 
um, if we can do a direct placement on a 20 or 30, he said, he recommended for the 10. Um, oh, the other thing that changes significantly is the bond council, um, or that's part of that, the reason that, that increases so much is because of the bond council. Um, that almost doubles, and that is just because there's a lot more paperwork, a lot more legal when you're going out to market. There is one mistake on here. Um, the total issuance expense is only $4 million project on the 20 or 30 year. He typed in 134, and I was actually looking at the numbers, it's actually 144.5. It doesn't change anything, I know, but I just wanted to uh, be sure that you guys all saw that. Um, so, total debt service payments you can see at the bottom, that was one of the um, questions and concerns on the instrument. Um, so those are there. What I did in all of these scenarios, and I realize this feels like a really thick packet of scenarios, thicker than we've, we've discussed, um, is try to print off every possible combination somebody might want to see tonight. Because I did want to get, if, if we're still leaving August, we want to get a decision. Um, <laughs> we can think of something. So I'm sure you can, and that's why I do have the spreadsheets on my computer in front of me. So if you think of something I did not anticipate, um, I can still run it. Um, so I'm just going to kind of dive in here and, and go with what, what I do have. So the past few um, conversations we've had about this, I think we've pretty much narrowed it down to um, we have to go in this calendar year. Um, so in the previous scenarios, I had options for um, 21 and 22. Those are not on here. These are all for this year. This scenario, the way I printed all of these, looks a little bit different from what I have provided to you in the previous conversations. Um, as we start getting more and more details, I realized the way I had it formatted was not really working. Um, because the way I had it formatted, originally was how it affected just our bottom line. I didn't show total revenue, total expenses, and all those things. So here I think it's a little bit more easier to look at these. A little bit more easier. Pardon my English. It is a little bit easier um, to look at these than the previous scenarios that you've looked at before. Um, information is still essentially the same. The top right hand corner of each one highlighted in blue there is what this scenario contains. Um, and then down the right hand side, you'll see where the millage is going. So, for example, um, the first one labeled one at the top um, is a combined 6.9. Um, I think there was some interest in the last meeting to see if we could go lower than 7.9 um, and still make it. The first two scenarios you see there are 6.9 and then 7.9. These do not include doing the bus garage. So the bus garage is not in here, and gurney stemming is not in any of these. I was, I think we agreed the last, um, the last conversation that gurney would um, kind of come off of these scenarios for now. So these first two, you have this is no bus garage. This is if we did not do the bus garage ever in this in this in next, the next yes yeah. right. So and and I, I yeah. Because I, I was asked to, to, to see what it would look like. So um, I, I don't think there's a lot of interest there. I provided it. If you would like to see it, there it is. I mean, it's not possible, right? We need the bus garage in the basement. It certainly is a recommendation for us. Possible. Well, it's, it's more likely that we'll end up with. And we don't have that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look at those, um, doesn't get you a whole lot further anyway. Um, 6.9, we're still only going to get three years, maybe four. Um, 7.9, you know, we can get four years out of that, but again, that's a project off that um, they end up seeking some more money into it. So, moving on to number three. Um, this is a 7.9 combined levy. Three and four both are 7.9 combined, so you, you'll be able to see at the bottom um, the ending balance is exactly the same. It's the same millage. The only difference between 
between these is I put more, I moved for um, item three, it's 5.9 in the general and two in PI. And then on four, we have 4.05 in the general and 3.85 in the PI. The reason I did 3.85, I know before we were talking um, four and 3.9, I made it 3.85 because that is the actual reduction in the millage as a, as a result of the, um, the box volume. So if that is the route we wanted to go, and we wanted to be able to say what's going into the PI is exactly what's coming off of your millage, that's what it would look like. Is the PI millage, is that subject to 920? Yeah. So, so it's all the same. Inside millage is not, but the voting millage is still looking. Unless the inside millage is a variable, though, it's all in on general. Okay. 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 Is there anything I should be looking at in 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13? So don't even look at them. Those, those were all of the different I'll Those, away. those were all of the um, cops. We're looking at scenarios. Thank you. 
second I would not be available. And then one of my daughter's um, chair question. But do you have any pathways with the sixth or the fourth meeting? The fourth, first, fourth dinner? The sixth is the day that I come back. My airplane is on time. That's Challenge by which was to keep each meeting with two major topics of action per meeting. So I think last meeting we had five that I counted the major topics. And personally, I sort of fall after the meeting. I think I Okay, that's ridiculous. And we did the next year. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley is not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's going to be no. <laughs> oh, you yeah. won't be here. Sorry. Yeah, but um, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine. I, I can do either um, the ninth or the sixth, but just so we know. I, I prefer the sixth just because I have no idea what that's going to happen on the ninth. Yeah. Um, can you just try and keep that meeting like not? I mean, Are you seeing any update at that meeting? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The 10th is Mother's Day. Yeah. 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 So we will, because I'm looking at the six and staffing recommendations, so we will probably bring that up to the 20th and we will come right in the fourth time. So we'll get the recommendation and then we'll be tied to the meeting. Then you think you can start a little later? Have it replace the meeting and put you together? Okay, but the six no, meetings will be shorter. No, okay. I'm just trying to keep it at six. Okay. And what time is your flight then? Okay, good. We'll see you to the airport at like six in the morning. Okay, so all right. Yeah. Um, it takes a while to get back to you. I will do my best to clear Andrew's report. I just want. I, I do not want to remove action. I still want to take action. But I'll I'll try to remove anything that's report out or anything that we can discuss with general business, recommendations, all that. No, that's that, great. That will Social studies right now, science. Um, I mean, new, I mean, new positions, yeah. additional headcount. Okay, that'll make it easier. Well, I mean, the caveat's always uh, yeah. okay. Right. right. So right now we've got. I think we checked today with ninety some in final forms that have started forms. So when that number gets over a hundred, then we're starting to talk about an additional MD in garden. So that's the one that's allowed to garden. No additional programming that requires that. Would that be a new person or a shift within the right? It would be a new person. A person that had been produced prior. Someone that's been registered. That would be a new registration. Okay, any other, other business?
first was the uh, mm -hmm. Second. Second. All right. 